Matthew Dowd, you inspire a lot of my thinking on this. I want to start with you over Texas, um, where all of the heat was around this issue over the weekend, but it is not the only battleground. Um, Texas Governor Abbott saying he'll veto Article 10 of the budget uh, passed by the legislature. Article 10, of course, funds the legislative branch. No pay for those who abandon their responsibilities. Stay tuned. Of course, they did not abandon their responsibilities. The Democrats in the Texas legislature um, very much holding up their obligations to their constituents and the voters. But this is how bullies and autocrats, frankly, play. Well, good to be here, and it's you know, it's 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 unbelievable being here in Texas uh, at this moment in time. I mean, what's amazing to me is is Governor Abbott and other governors around the country have actually stepped up Donald Trump's autocracy movement in in the course of this. The idea, because Governor Abbott didn't get his voter suppression bill, which elements of we could go through if you want, but elements of are just completely outrageous that he then wants to basically get rid of the legislative branch. Now he can't do that with, through the Texas constitution. And that'll be obviously, if he tries his pushback, he can't do it through the US constitution, but it's wholly undemocratic um, that what's going on here. It's almost as if Texas watched Georgia and Arizona and the Texas GOP said, hold my shiner box. I got, we got more to do. Um, and it's just a, a complete movement down away from democracy. But this is as clear an example of a, another step towards autocracy and another step away from democracy. And you know I've said this many times with you over the last month. I think Joe Biden's heart's in the right place. I don't think much of the leadership of the Democratic Party and Joe Biden is doing near enough. This is the fundamental issue of our time. It's probably been the fundamental issue since Abraham Lincoln got elected in 1861. This is an assault on democracy, and I don't know how any other issue can be debated, compromised or whatever if this sits on the table and this is going on. This should be a four alarm fire, all engines on deck, everybody to the, the barricades. We got to do this. And I think that maybe the president has some secret plan that I'm unaware of. But until that is done, until he says, I'm putting everything else on hold, everything else I want to do is on hold, including infrastructure until we get this done. Corrine Jean-Pierre, Deputy White House Press Secretary um, Jason Johnson, did say today, I believe she's traveling to Tulsa with the president, that he would have something to say on voting rights. Um, we, we should also make clear that the reason the federal legislation is so urgently needed is that it is the only thing that would undermine the nearly 400 voter suppression laws. It is like the COVID vaccine, 100 percent effective at keeping the sick democracy from becoming severely ill or hospitalized with these laws. The federal legislation would protect against all of these bills, which even Republicans will concede are based on a lie. Most Republicans, there was no voter fraud. But Matthew makes a good point. We should go through what's in this Texas law because the specifics are more devastating than the spirit in which it was passed based on a lie. What the Texas bill does, and, and we should also be clear that the Texas law will eventually be passed. What the Democrats did was walk out and prevent it from being passed over the weekend. But Republicans hold a supermajority there. The Texas law targets voting methods used widely by black and Latino voters in Houston. Almost all of the measures only target the large urban centers. It bars Sunday morning get out the vote programs used to mobilize church goers, largely black church goers. It includes language reminiscent of Jim Crow laws and early versions of the bill. This is um, in, in some ways the most brazen sort of discrimination in voter suppression. Jason Johnson. Yeah, Nicole. And, and here's what makes it even worse. It is, as usual, a solution to a problem that was created by the Texas legislature. Right. Because if, if you look at local news, they're like, this is all about Harris County. That's it. It's all about Harris County. And what did we see happen during COVID, during the 2020 election in Harris County? You saw instance after instance of Republicans in the state of Texas trying to cut the number of voting locations. You wouldn't have to have 24 hour voting if you actually gave people enough voting locations. You wouldn't have to have so many mail and ballot situations if you gave people adequate voting locations, if you gave them enough adequate and functioning voting machines. So Republicans keep creating a problem, then claiming it's a problem and then trying to come up with a solution that really only helps them. But I, I agree, and I have been saying this alarm all along. 
I don't think Joe Biden gets it. I, I'm not even going to be as careful as some other people. He doesn't get it. He, he does. I don't care about infrastructure, to be perfectly honest with you. I care about the fact that we have a certain window in which to put in some of this legislation to protect people's ability to vote. Because state legislatures can move faster than the federal government. We've got a window till maybe sometime later on this year to put these laws into place, put a federal floor into place as to how voting should work so it can possibly be counteracted by next summer. If they don't do this until sometime next year, it is a very, very high likelihood that courts will say it's not enough time for these laws to be changed and time for the election. And Democrats will lose both the House and the Senate in 2022 if Joe Biden, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema don't get serious about voting rights. You know, Claire, I, I want to be fair to this White House. Ron Klain said on this program on Friday that they'll have something to say about this soon. Karine Jean-Pierre reiterated that today. Um, this president has a 62 percent approval rating. Um, turns out that protecting the country from the coronavirus is the right thing to do. And it's very popular. And I see this the way Jason and Matthew Dowd see this. Um, I, I want to play something that a Texas um, legislature had to say about your former colleagues in the Senate. You know, down here in Texas, we'd say when times get tough, it's time to cowboy up. And so with all due respect, I'd ask Senator Manchin to please cowboy up and understand that uh, you may not think you're, you know, you don't want to destroy the country, but they're going to destroy the country state by state with these harsh voter suppression tactics. This is very, very tough. Let me be even more explicit than that. They're not going to destroy the country for them. I, I, I feel like Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense, he saw dead people. I see Republican um, fanaticism, and that's what this is. The Republicans view the voter suppression push as existential. They will not and cannot win, especially. I mean, there's a reason Georgia went first. There is a reason Texas is being shored up, because Beto got way too close, to way too close to Ted Cruz. And they want to kill all those stories about Texas turning purple. So for Republicans, this this is it. They're not trying to fix bridges. They're not trying to vaccinate Americans. They're not trying to stop people from you know, you know any other problems. In the state. They're simply trying to stop the kinds of voters who never vote from them from voting. And they're trying to do it before the midterms. There's a reason this is happening so fast. There's an election for two years. And this is what every state legislature has taken up first. With that as the reality of the voter suppression laws, what say you about the filibuster and the White House posture? Well, I agree with everyone that Joe Biden needs to use his bully pulpit to defend our democracy that is clearly under assault. Now, I can argue whether or not it's a good strategy for the, a, a political party to say our main plank, the thing we believe in most, is trying to keep people from voting. Um, you know, I'm not sure that in the long haul is going to help them because everyone gets it. Everyone sees what they're doing. They're doing this in plain sight. Now, the other thing they're doing, as you and I discussed earlier today, that is really scary. And this is where I think Joe Manchin will pay attention is where legislatures are trying to change state constitutions to remove the power of elected officials to stand up for the rule of law. They are trying to, to basically take the power away from secretaries of state to run elections in their states. And that's what they're elected to do. And by the way, Joe Manchin was secretary of state of West Virginia. He understands that part. So I do think that there will be tremendous pressure put on every Democrat to try to fashion a bill that will, at a minimum, avoid a very long, protracted court battle for some of this nonsense that they're passing in the state legislatures. I do think the courts will be, you know, where we can stop a lot of this, because a lot of it is on its face nutty and unconstitutional. Right. But um, it, that, that takes time, as you know, Nicole. So uh, in the short run, getting a bill through the Senate that will protect some basic things, like if the people elect a secretary of state, they have the power to run an election. 